Wireless communications has fundamentally revolutionized the way we live and conduct business in today's world. As smartphones and tablets and machine-to-machine -machine all skyrocket in popularity, and as customers continue to demand greater and greater data rates to their mobile device, every cellular provider around the world will continue to face the paramount problem of bandwidth shortage. Today, the cellular world operates in small slices of frequency below 5 gigahertz. All of these spectrum bands contain a sliver of bandwidth such that a cell tower can only transmit a certain amount of capacity, even using today's 4G LTE technology. The key to alleviate this growing spectrum shortage is to operate at higher frequencies, millimeter wave frequencies such as 28 gigahertz and 38 gigahertz, where so much more raw bandwidth is available, and faster data rates can thus be delivered to the next generation of smartphones. Wireless developers must understand and characterize this millimeter wave regime of 28 and 38 gigahertz radio wave propagation in densely populated urban environments. A common myth among wireless practitioners today is that rainfall and oxygen will attenuate millimeter wave radio frequencies. However, our work and work in the satellite industry have shown that at 28 gigahertz, neither rainfall nor the atmosphere will greatly attenuate wireless propagation. NYU Wireless is one of the first academic research centers in the world to characterize the millimeter wave frequencies of 28 gigahertz and 38 gigahertz for 5G cellular, fifth generation. And we've performed these measurements in one of the toughest and most densely populated areas in the world, New York City. We selected various transmitter locations on rooftops and balconies in downtown Brooklyn and Manhattan to mimic cell towers at different heights. We also selected random receiver sites in common pedestrian areas such as sidewalks, courtyards, parks and plazas, all within several blocks of the transmitters. We also wanted to study how 28 GHz propagates into a building, so we conducted signal strength tests to measure reflection and penetration through building materials such as brick, concrete, glass, and drywall. In total, we had four transmitter locations, over 30 receiver locations, and we conducted these measurements over four months uh, to help us characterize and model 28 GHz propagation. Our measurement equipment is a custom-built channel sounder that uses a sliding correlator method. It has a dynamic range of almost 180 decibels, and we calibrated the system twice a day. We use highly directional antennas, which broadcast and receive radio waves in very specific directions, and we automatically rotate these antennas 360 degrees using a robotic system. This equipment allows us to measure and resolve incoming radio waves with a spatial resolution of 10 degrees and a time resolution of about 2.5 nanoseconds. In other words, we can identify and record very accurately where and when the radio waves are arriving. We use the National Instruments LabVIEW programming suite to record data and control the robotic antenna system. Using LabVIEW installed on a simple laptop, we recorded thousands of measurements over four months, collecting over 100 gigabytes of raw data. The raw data was saved in simple text files containing received power over time. These files were post-processed to produce meaningful statistics. We generate propagation statistics such as the angular spread of the departing and arriving radio waves, the average number of unique directions to receive energy, and how long the radio waves propagate in the environment. We also produce statistics such as signal strength at a particular distance from a transmitter, which help determine the cell radius and the density of the cell towers needed to provide adequate coverage. These statistics are very useful in designing the hardware and algorithms for the mobile device as well as base station infrastructure for the next generation of cellular technology. From our data, we measured an average path loss exponent of 5.7 at 28 GHz. However, we found that radio waves can propagate long distances in a highly reflective environment, and base stations can still communicate with smartphones up to 200 meters away if using directional antennas. Beyond that distance, the phone will need to hand off to another cell tower. Thus, future 28 GHz base stations will be picocells of 1 to 200 meters in range, and phased antenna arrays capable of beam steering will be needed to overcome the high path loss and improve link quality. Our building penetration tests show that tinted glass is highly reflective with 80% of power being reflected. Concrete and brick showed similar reflectivity. Drywall and non-tinted glass with a few centimeters thick had small penetration losses of 6.8 and 3.6 dB with moderate reflectivity, so indoor access points may be needed when users enter a building. Combining energy content in different beams from different directions at the receiver can greatly improve signal quality and link budget. For example, using our measured data, 
we find that more than 7 dB per decade improvement in path loss can be achieved when we combine the three strongest powers coherently, which is very significant to carriers for range extension and return on infrastructure investment. Understanding the channel allows researchers and engineers to then begin building the infrastructure to provide multi-gigabit per second data rates to mobile phones in urban environments using highly directional, steerable antennas. NYU Wireless, researchers at NYU and NYU Poly are leading the way in this new future. It's in a very exciting future.